Hello and welcome to another TLDR EU video. While attention has turned to the economic fallout from the coronavirus outbreak, certain things seem to have slipped under the radar. Not least, the vote that happened in Russia, which now means that Vladimir Putin could rule the country until 2036. That's another 16 years of Putin. So in this video, we'll take a look at exactly what happened, and importantly, what this means for Russia. Regular viewers will know that we have a whole bunch of enamel pin badges on our website, with us creating a whole bunch of countries with shoes designs. So if you'd like to pick up your country's badge, or just a country you like, even including Russia, then be sure to check out the TLDR store. Also, the first 25 people to use the code RUSSIA will get 10% off their order, and all profits go straight back into our videos. The link to the store can be found down below. First things first, a bit of background. Vladimir Putin has led Russia in one form or another, be it as president or prime minister, since 1999, most recently securing his fourth presidential term back in March of 2018, winning more than 76% of the vote after his main opposition was barred from the race, all in all allowing him to rule until 2024. He's been able to hold on to power for the last 21 years by bouncing back and forth between being president and prime minister. First, he started off as prime minister in 1999, then he became acting president on New Year's Eve of the very same year. And when elections were held, Putin formally became president in his own right and served for two consecutive terms until 2008. At which point, for the second time, he became prime minister. Then, in 2012, Putin returned for a third presidential term, before in 2018, securing his fourth. He's got a bit of a problem going forward though, that may put an end to this streak. The Russian constitution currently has a term limit, which means that he's already been forced to take a term out from being president, during which time he was prime minister for his second term. But Article 81, Clause 3, states that one and the same person may not be elected President of the Russian Federation for more than two terms running. With that in mind, Putin scheduled a vote on a wide range of constitutional changes for the 22nd of April, immediately after Russia's Constitutional Court approved a so-called reset on term limits. Obviously, with the coronavirus outbreak still in flux, this was substantially pushed back to the end of June with Putin saying at the time, our absolute priority is the health and safety of our people, which is why I think it's necessary to move the vote to a later date. So what are the changes that are being voted on, and how does this impact the presidential term limits? Well, the proposals included changes to the consecutive term limits we mentioned earlier. The current constitutional rules would be dropped, and replaced with a new version that states, one person cannot serve as president of the Russian Federation for more than two terms. While this sounds very similar and doesn't actually sound like it will help Putin out one bit, the kicker comes in the next line. This provision shall apply to the president of the Russian Federation in office, as of the time this law enters into force, discounting the number of terms during which such person has served in this position, as of the time this law enters into force in effect, zeroing the number of terms that Putin has served, allowing him to serve a further two six-year terms, taking him to 2036. This is a remarkably long time. In fact, if Putin were to serve until then, he would have been in power in one form or another for over 36 years, longer than even any Soviet-era leader. That's not to say that there's not other ways Putin could do this. Before unveiling this zeroing of his terms, there was immense speculation about how Putin would retain his power going forward, ranging from the idea that he could scrap term limits entirely, the option of him moving back to the Prime Minister's seat with so-called strengthened powers, or instead serve as the head of the State Council. Opposition figures have claimed that Putin is continuing to position himself as a president for life, something denied by the Kremlin with an official spokesman saying that the constitution does not provide for such a position. While the most outwardly significant aspect of this vote was the impact on Putin's continued rule, this reform was actually buried within a slew of other constitutional reforms, something that Russia today picks up on. Widely reported in the West as giving Vladimir Putin a chance to serve two more terms, 
the amendments are actually a sweeping set of changes to Russia's basic law. Vladimir Putin himself decided to focus on the nationalist sentiment when addressing the nation. I am sure that all of you, when you make this important decision, think foremost about your family members and rely on the values that unite us. Truth and justice, respect for the working man and the elderly, family and the caring for children, their health, their moral and spiritual upbringing. The amendments enshrine these values and principles as the highest and unconditional constitutional guarantees. Such was the drive to vote that according to the FT, posters and mass text messages promised Muscovites a million prizes through raffles in exchange for voting. Teachers, doctors and municipal employees have complained that the state is putting pressure on them to vote and large state companies are reportedly offering their own prizes for voting via QR codes that could be used to track people at polling stations. But besides the impact on Putin's ability to continue ruling, what are the other amendments? Well, they ban any action aimed at or calling for the so-called expropriation of Russian territory. They formally recognise marriage as a union between one man and one woman. In other words, a ban on gay marriage, with an included reference to Russia's ancestral faith in God. Russian would be enshrined as the language of the state-forming ethnic group. Pensions would be index-limited, that is to say, adjusted upwards according to inflation. The minimum wage would be set at not less than the average subsistence rate for working-age people across Russia. The State Council, the main advisory body assisting the President, is now to set the direction of domestic and foreign policy and socio-economic priorities, potentially setting the stage for Putin to take it over once his terms come to an end. And finally, amendments mean that officials holding public office in the Russian Federation shall not be allowed to hold citizenship of a foreign state or have a residency permit as well as open and hold accounts or keep money and valuables in foreign banks located outside of the Russian Federation. Hours before the polls formally closed on Wednesday, Russia's elections committee released so-called preliminary results, showing support standing at 73%, a move whose legality is under question, as it's typically illegal to release polling before the formal end of the result. Regardless, the final result was 77.9% of votes supporting the change, and just 21.2% against. An independent Russian election monitoring group has called the entire vote just a PR exercise from the very start, with no legal need for it. It will go down in history as an attack on the sovereignty of the people. Their specific criticisms include the fact that opponents were barred from campaigning in the media, remote electronic voting was organised on an illegal basis, and election monitors were appointed by the Civic Chamber, a government agency. All things considered, Putin now has the ability to rule until 2036, and acts as an outward sign that he ultimately reigns supreme, and that no constitutional barrier is too large to stop him from ruling. All the while, Putin's ratings have been slipping and recently hit their lowest level in 20 years. Putin may simply use the newfound impetus of unbridled power to reaffirm his position and image. As Clara Ferraria Marquez, a Bloomberg opinion columnist, puts it, a strong presidency has become a super presidency. Putin gets a greater ability to interfere with the judiciary by dismissing judges. He gets a stronger veto to block legislation, he gets immunity from prosecution that matches ongoing efforts elsewhere to tighten control over everything from the media to the theatre stage. He may need all of that if popular disappointment increases faster than economic growth. All in all though, despite slipping approval, Putin has certainly gained even more power. What do you think though? Is this a constitutional coup and is Putin positioning himself as a president for life? Or is this all genuinely in Russia's best interests? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, you can also get involved in the conversation over on Discord. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we post a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers whose support makes these videos possible. And if you want to see your name mentioned at the end of the videos, just like these people, then be sure to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.